let's get up to speed on some stories you've heard in past episodes of Plain English. Hi there, everyone. I'm Jeff, and this is Plain English, where we help you upgrade your English with stories about current events and trending topics. Almost every Monday and Thursday, we pick a new story for you. Some way you can learn about the world and learn some English at the same time. I say almost because twice a year we take a look back at previous stories and we tell you what's new about those topics. Now today we'll take a closer look at Iceland, the Golden Bachelor, Notre Dame, Trump's trials, Sam Bankman-Fried. Over tourism, the elections in Mexico, and Prince Harry. We're going to touch on a lot, and everything we talk about today, we have talked about previously. If you want to see the original stories of any of these topics, go to the transcript at plainenglish.com/six seven six. Because I have linked to all these previous plain English topics, the expression today is "nod off," something you will not be doing during this lesson. It's a long one today, so let's get right into it. Iceland is entering a new period of seismic activity. In lesson six thirty-three, you learned that a new corridor of magma had been discovered under the Rake Jane's Peninsula. Cracks were opening in the earth under a town called Grindavik. There had been many small earthquakes, far more than typical. Which indicated that volcanic eruptions were likely. The town of Grindavik, home to about three thousand eight hundred people, was evacuated in November twenty twenty three. The famous Blue Lagoon Spa was closed as a precaution. There was a real danger that the magma would burst to the surface of the earth. Either in Grindavik itself, or from a nearby volcano. Well, it happened. There were four major volcanic eruptions between December 2023 and March 2024, and there is continued risk of more eruptions. The eruptions happened in a volcanic hill. With a series of craters near Grindavik, the biggest of the four eruptions was in March. Grindavik reopened to residents in February 2024, months after being closed, but it had to be evacuated again in March. Now It's unclear if the town will ever be safe to live in again. Heat and water service has been interrupted by the eruption. The government has published a bill offering to buy homes and take over mortgage loans of any resident that does not want to return home. It's unclear if anyone will be able to live permanently. In that town, ever again, it's basically as bad as it can get. One evacuated resident said, "The Blue Lagoon, the famous spa, appears to be safe from the direct risk of lava flow. However, it does close occasionally if lava flows are moving in the spa's direction, or if the air quality." Is too bad. The golden bachelor couple is getting a divorce. In lesson six forty one, not that long ago, you heard about Gary Turner and Teresa Nist. Gary was the star, and Teresa was the winner 
of the first reality television dating series for older adults. At the conclusion of the season, the two got married live on television before an audience of five million people. Gary was from Indiana, Teresa from New Jersey. But just three months after their televised wedding, the two announced that they were getting a divorce. Donald Trump is a defendant in a criminal trial, the first time a former president has ever been in that position. He's been a defendant before, but those were all civil cases, lawsuits against him from other citizens. This is a criminal case. As you learned in Lesson 566, Trump has been charged in the state of New York for falsifying business records. The state charges that he paid an adult film actress to keep quiet about an affair they had, and then he called those payments legal expenses in his business records. They weren't legal expenses, that's for sure. Falsifying business records is typically a misdemeanor, worthy of a slap on the wrist. But prosecutors say Trump's actions were linked to violations of campaign laws, which makes the smaller charge more serious. I stand by my statement in the original story. This is a very tenuous charge. Trump will almost certainly avoid jail time, even if he is convicted of all these charges. Still, he must go to court four days per week like any other defendant. He complains about the temperature in the courtroom, that he can't drink Diet Coke, only water, and he complains about how the courtroom sketch artist has depicted him. Reporters have noticed him nodding off at the table during the trial. There are three other sets of criminal charges that have been filed against him. However, trials on those charges are unlikely to take place until after the November 2024 election, where Trump is a candidate once again. Speaking of trials, you heard in Lessons 628 and 629 that Sam Bankman-Fried, the founder of FTX, was convicted of fraud. A judge in the case handed down a 25-year sentence to the 32-year-old. At his sentencing, SBF, as he is known, said, My useful life is probably over. Notre Dame Cathedral, which burned in 2019, and which you heard about in Lesson 149, is almost rebuilt. The public agency overseeing its reconstruction affirmed that the almost 900-year-old cathedral will reopen in December 2024. In an eerie and tragic parallel, the 400-year-old Old Stock Exchange in Copenhagen, Denmark, caught fire last month. Like Notre Dame, it had been undergoing renovations at the time the fire started. Like at Notre Dame, a centuries-old spire fell to the ground in flames. Like at Notre Dame, civilians rushed artwork and historical artifacts out of the building, preserving most of the building's artistic treasures. The old stock exchange had been home to the Chamber of Commerce. The city and the chamber both pledged to rebuild it. 
we cannot do without the stock exchange building, the mayor said. Speaking of European city centers, Venice has begun charging tourists five euros to enter its city center. Lesson 99 was about over tourism. The new fee is a way to control crowds. Tourists can pay online and get a QR code as proof of payment. Roving inspectors will be asking tourists to show their proof of payment. On a personal note, I read the book Spare. This is Prince Harry's memoir autobiography. We talked about him, gosh, in lessons 7 and 49 and 228. I wouldn't say I came away from the book feeling sympathetic to him, but I would say I came away more respectful of his positions. I wasn't sure what I would think about the book, but I'm glad I read it. There are some cringe-worthy moments, parts that were clearly aimed at creating buzz and selling more books, but the book is worth reading if you're interested in this sort of thing. And on another personal note, For the first time in my life, I will get an in-person, up-close view of another country's national elections. Mexico's president is coming to the end of his six-year term. You heard about him, Andres Manuel López Obrador, in Lesson 68 and Lesson 101. The two leading candidates to replace him are both women so Mexico will almost certainly elect its first female president on June 2nd. This is an easy one. To nod off is to fall asleep, but it means to fall asleep for just a little bit of time and not in a bed and not in a situation where you're trying to sleep. So here are some times when you cannot use nod off. I go to bed these days between about 10 and 11 at night. I don't nod off in bed because I'm trying to go to sleep. I often take naps in the afternoon. It gives me more energy and helps me stay alert for the rest of the day. Sometimes only about 5 or 10 minutes of sleep is enough, but I still don't use nod off because I lie down on the couch and prepare for my nap. So nod off is not for times when you're trying to sleep. You might go to a movie Maybe one of those long three-hour movies they're making these days. And you might nod off during the movie. Admit it, this has happened to you. It doesn't mean the movie is boring. You're just tired and you nod off for a few minutes. You fall asleep for a few minutes. You wake up, the movie is still going, you leave and you say to your spouse or your date, I think I nodded off for a few minutes. Another place you might nod off is in the passenger seat of a car. I love to be the one driving, so on long trips, I'm often behind the wheel. But imagine this scenario. You're driving and having a nice conversation with the passenger. Then, there's a lull in the conversation. 15, 20 minutes pass, and nobody says anything. Your passenger then comments on the progress you've made, or on the weather, or the traffic. Did you nod off, you might ask? 
That's not an accusation, just a question. Did you fall asleep for a few minutes? It's really not good to nod off if you're driving. A lot of car crashes are caused by drivers nodding off during the day or at night. So if you're feeling tired as you're driving, stop, get out, go for a walk, take a nap, whatever you have to do, because you don't want to nod off behind the wheel. Here's something funny. Nod off is a polite term. There's nothing wrong with nodding off, not the way most people use the term. But fall asleep, that one can seem bad, even though it means almost the same thing. Imagine you're at a conference and there's a speaker at the front of the room and rows of chairs in the audience. This is prime territory for nodding off. But listen to this. If you say, I think Elena fell asleep during the presentation. Hmm, that sounds like an accusation. Like, can you believe it? Can you believe she was so rude? She fell asleep. But if instead you say, I think Elena may have nodded off during the presentation. Well, that's much softer. That's like a winking acknowledgement. Oh, it could have happened to anyone. She just nodded off. It's not that bad. Donald Trump finds himself in an unusual situation. No, not in court. He's frequently in court these days. What I mean is, Trump is not generating attention and media coverage for himself. In court, he has to sit in his seat and not talk. A Herculean effort for him. His lawyers do the talking in the courtroom. And so the reporters focus their attention on the minutia of the trial. What color is Trump's tie? Is he leaning in or leaning back? Does he appear to be paying attention? How much is he writing down? What might he be whispering to his lawyers? And finally, is he nodding off? One reporter said Trump's mouth went slack and his chin fell forward, evidence that he was nodding off off. Now today in this lesson number 676, we took a look back at a lot of previous stories we talked about, and it's fun doing this. We do this twice a year. It's a bit of a tradition to do this once in the spring and once in the fall. But listen, in between these update episodes, I sometimes see an article and I think of you. Yes, you. And I think, wow, I'd really like to share that with all my friends at Plain English. So what I do in those situations is I send it to the team and the team puts it in the lesson emails that JR sends out on Mondays and Thursdays. So the topic of the story is one thing, but in the email, I put a link to an article that I think you would like usually one related to a past story. I mean, there was more that I couldn't talk about today. I have a list of updates I couldn't fit even in today's story. Rikers Island, Boeing, Threads, I just couldn't get to them today. But I can put updates about those things in the emails, and that is what I do. So if you're not signed up to get those emails, then go do that now plainenglish.com slash mail, M-A-I-L, and you'll start getting emails from JR on Mondays and Thursdays, and you'll see what I mean. plainenglish.com slash mail, M-A-I-L. All right, on Thursday, we're going to be talking about Daniel Kahneman, one of the most influential social scientists ever. 
He recently passed away, and we'll talk about his life on Thursday and his contributions to psychology and economics next Monday. They're really good, really, really good episodes. I've written them already, so I already know you're going to like them. Don't miss it starting on Thursday. You've reached the end of the audio lesson, but there's a lot more to the Plain English experience on the website plainenglish.com. A lot of plainenglish.com is free, but the best tools to help you upgrade your English are part of the Starter and Plus memberships. And if you've ever been curious about what those look like, well, I have good news for you. We've unlocked some free sample lessons that let you try out the Starter and Plus features for yourself. There are two easy ways to find the free samples. First, at plainenglish.com, there's a new link at the top of the page that says free samples. I've also put a link in the show notes for this episode. In the sample lessons, you can do the exercises, listen to the fast audio, take one of our toolkit workshops, practice your writing, and more. So try it out today. Click the link in the show notes of this episode or find the link that says free samples at the top of plainenglish.com.